Mrs. Goldberg. Mrs. Goldberg. You who, Mrs. Kramer. You who, Mrs. Herman, come to your window. Well, I guess they're still sleeping after all the fun they had at Mrs. Goldberg's last night. But you know Molly Goldberg. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, and for dessert, let me just tell you a wonderful bunt cake. And what did she serve with the bunt cake? I'm going to tell you, Sanka coffee. If you've never had Sanka, never heard of Sanka. Well, next time you go to the grocery store, ask your grocer about, oh, wait a minute. You can't find it at the grocery store anymore, but you can get it on Amazon. So do yourself a favor and get yourself some Sanka coffee. And it's instant. No trouble at all. No waiting around for it to drip or percolate. Just as easy as boiling some water. One, two, three, you've got a delicious cup of coffee. And trust me when I say, you won't have any more restless nights. You'll be able to sleep. No more tossing and turning. You won't sit there and go to yourself, well, I should have spent the weekend at Pinkus Pines where I could have slept under the pine trees and drifted off into dreamland. No, sir, you'll be able to do that in your very own bed in your very own house. Why? Because they've removed all of the caffeine. Well, 97%. It's 97% caffeine free. So they've taken the caffeine out and they've left the sleep in. So which means you can drink as much as you like and sleep as much as you like. Now, if you see Molly, tell her I was looking for her because I have to return her sugar bowl. But I've got to go answer my door. I'm expecting guests today. They're coming to tour my home. All my wonderful, wonderful followers from my YouTube channel. So we'll talk after a while. Huh? We'll, we'll, we'll have a chat. We'll have a snick snack. All right. Toodle you. Just a minute. I'm coming. Welcome. I'm glad you could finally make it to my humble abode. So let's begin the tour. Some things that I might point out to you that might be of interest, such as this piece of artwork on the wall, is something that I sculpted years ago. I used to do pottery and ceramics and all that kind of stuff there. So that's one of my original pieces. And let me hold this up because the other two are not. This is one of my original pieces. And let's see, what else? The drapes, as you may or may not know, I work in a manufacturing place where we make drapes for um, resorts and motels or hotels and such like that. So we are allowed to have whatever scrap fabric goes in a scrap box, which eventually goes out to the dumpster. So... I made new drapes for my living room, new shears. Down here we have basket of shawls and hats and scarves all made by yours truly. That's right, as I told you, I needle and I hook and I wasn't kidding. And as you can see, I love mid-century modern. Um, a lot of things are just like family collectibles. Um, such as these two figurines. My grandmother used to do ceramics. That's how I learned. She made those back in the late 60s. Um, what else? Uh, the lamps. I found those at an antique mall when I first moved here into my place. Um, pictures on the wall. Some of you may recognize these. A lot of people may have had them over the years. They were my grandmother's originally. She had um, purchased them with the, uh, you remember the H&S green stamps back in the day? 
Um, so those had a lot of childhood memories. So I was very, very honored and proud to have those come my way. And let me back up and show you the overall scheme of things. And we'll, we'll make a full circle here. Come over here, my little bar set up. So when I entertain, I can make cocktails. And let's see what else. Let's come around here to the dining room table, of which I recovered the seats with fabric from work and made matching curtains. And I'll give you a better look at the shears because you can't see them with the light hitting them. But I made those as well. And going around here, my espresso set, of which the rest is in the kitchen cupboard, uh, those were a gift from my aunt and uncle one year for Christmas. They had brought home from Italy when they lived in Italy. And we'll get to the kitchen in just a second, but there's curtains I made for the kitchen window. And coming back this way, we'll do a little turn here. And as you can see, I love Mardi Gras clowns. The top one... Um, was a gift for my mom and my stepfather when they went to visit my aunt and uncle in Italy. And these two here, I made myself. As I said, I used to do ceramics. The front one is all ceramic, low fire. And the back one is porcelain. I did a little bit of porcelain work and did some porcelain dolls years ago. And a little bit of brandy, anybody? And here's one of my little freeform artistic pieces that I put together with little odds and ends out of a grab bag from um, eBay. And it's, it's, you can see it, it's supposed to be a pirate who has died on his ship while trying to loot the treasure chest. And there is his steering wheel of the ship. Can you see? And we'll come over here and some more of my artistic work. The two African statues, I mold, did a cast out of a mold, uh, low fire ceramics. The the bowl and the cone incense burner are freeform sculpted out of um, stoneware clay. The bust that you see was one of the first things I did using a technique called draping, where you take your ceramic piece before it's fired, you have to use 100% cotton, you dip it in the liquid clay, which is called slip, and then sort of wring it out and do your draping. You've probably seen, like, they do it with porcelain, too, with the with the fine lace, um, like porcelain figures that have, like, like a big dresses with all the lace and everything. That's all done in the same fashion with the same technique, but it's used using um, porcelain slip instead of low-fire clay slip. And so the face and the, and the bust part were molded from one of my doll molds out of low-fire clay, and then... Um, I did all the draping and turned it into this piece. And that was done in about 2001, I believe. I dated everything on the underside, so. And coming along, let's come this way. And we'll make our way. And here is some more of my artistic ability. This was another porcelain doll I did. And if you don't recognize who it's supposed to be, it is supposed to be none other than Queen Elizabeth I, all the way down to the mohair, put on piece by piece to create her hair. And the vase that I showed you earlier, when you came in with all the cutouts, this is out of the same mold. I had purchased this plain vase that was just plain, and then there's another one you'll see that has a handle on either side. I had purchased these, this is years ago, in the mid-90s, at a 99-cent store. And I then took it to a local ceramic shop who had a gentleman that used to make plaster molds. And for $25, he made me a mold of both of the vases in one mold so I could cast more than one and do some artistic things. So this one I did a carving on. And then we'll come across over here. Behind that door is the downstairs bathroom. Seen one, seen them all. And here is a coat closet under the stairs. 
coming down here. I still have this. My father's mother bought this little rocking chair for me for my first Christmas, so I wasn't even a year old yet. And now here is the vase I told you with the handles. And we'll come over this way. Some more artistic artwork that I've done. And these items down here, my grandmother made the shepherd in ceramics in the 60s. And that used to sit by her front door on the inside by her front door. This is an old time, um, what do you call it? Uh, if you have a fireplace, it's a, um, a, a blower thing to, to get the, the fire started. You, you, it's like an accordion and you blow air onto the embers or whatever to start the, the fire or to rekindle the fire. And then the little dog, which my grandmother always had on her dresser. So that is something that has always been special to me. It's just a little doll, uh, dog figure. She didn't make it, but um, anyway. So now let us journey upstairs. Actually, let's do the kitchen before we go upstairs and see the craft room. And now, the kitchen. What do you think? Do I like to cook, bake, everything else? <laughs> I think I pretty much have every gadget imaginable for cooking and baking. Uh, Baking dishes down on the lower shelf down there. All the cupboards are full, as you can probably imagine, but I'll show you. A couple of things. Again, my grandmother and I were really close, so I do have a lot of her things, such as this old colander. And a trivet for hot dishes on the table. And here's some of my handiwork. Some pot holders that I made years ago. And I always liked having red in the kitchen so and these aren't Christmas but I was trying to do like an Italian theme at one point so I did the red white and green I would admit I may I may do a tutorial on that one of these days who knows and come over here to the sink and that's just plates and dishes and whatnot and we'll come over here give you an idea of serving serving things more serving bowls up there it's always fun to show things off, I think. And even more, and here's here's a little something that I I made a lot of things in, in ceramics over the years. These I made in, uh, can we see the back? 2000, was that say? 2001, I think it is. 2001, yeah. And they're just little, let's get a, get a closer look. They're little serving dishes. There's four of them. You can put Jello or cottage cheese or whatever. Jello molds. Here, I'll put a little light on the subject. There we go. And then we'll come over here and show you. I am a coffee drinker. So I have my coffee maker for the weekends. I usually make a pot of coffee on a Saturday and Sunday. And the rest of the time, it's one of the other two that you'll see. KitchenAid mixer for cooking and baking. And here is my Nespresso, I can never pronounce the other name, but anyway, it's um, these little pods. So it's like a, it's before Keurig, but, um, and it's got a thing to froth the milk and everything else, and you open this up and put your pod in. And anyway, and coming over here, see what I mean by Italian? Oh, time to fill the olive oil. And come over here and the next coffee thing is the Keurig that's for first thing in the morning before work I'll have a cup and let's see what else we're gonna find in here oh let's go past that and some more serving things I used to love to entertain when I was still in California I used to have dinner parties at least once a month and invite friends over and do a whole dinner and dessert and the whole nine yards and cocktails and then do movie night and you can see some of the, the teapot I made in ceramics. See if I can get up there without a ladder and give you a close look at it. 
Can you see some of that detail there? A couple of French coffee presses. There's the rest of my espresso set that you saw earlier. And how many recognize that coffee server from like the late 50s or mid 60s, I think. And some vintage Pyrex, because I love to use Pyrex. And who recognizes one of these? Three-tier goodie. There's a oh there's the big there's the big one. There's the top one. Okay. Mixing bowls. There's a big um, ceramic shell serving dish that I made in ceramics years ago to put like salads, potato salad. It's great to put pasta in. My paella pan. I haven't made paella in a long time, but I used to love to make that. And then the wondrous pasta pot. It's a pot underneath for the water, and then the top one is a strainer that lifts out. You put your pasta in there, and then on top of that, it's got a removable steamer basket. So it's a steamer pasta pot, the whole thing all in one. Roasting pan, or roasting oven, whatever. And then all my roasting pans for when I make lasagna and turkeys and chickens and all that good natured stuff. Yeah. So overall, this is the kitchen. Well, would you look at the time I think it's time now to take you upstairs and show you the craft room. Yarn room, computer room, jewelry making room. It is the room. It is my safe haven. It is my go-to. So let's make our way. Oh, up we go. Oh, let me show you the staircase first. This, when I moved in, this was all open. But these bars were in the closet here under the stairs and they were just, they're just metal, they're steel or something. And they were just, um, they weren't painted white, but it was like somebody had primed them. And so up top in the wood, which I decoratively painted, there are holes to put them in. And down below, if there wasn't carpet, there's holes for them to go into. So they're not, they're not sturdy for safety, but I wanted to give this a little touch. Let me back up so you can kind of get the full effect of that. Yeah, and we'll make our way upstairs to the room. And I've got a table on order to put in this corner. Finally found what I wanted. Oh, I won't show you all the family pictures, but there I am as a child. Isn't that nice? Yep, I was a child once. And my grandmother that I spoke of, this is her and my grandfather's wedding picture from 1939. Italian, or you can't tell, can you? All right, a quick glimpse at my master bathroom. And I don't think I need a light on in here, but you can see it's sort of a nautical theme. And above the commode is a watercolor that I did in 1983. I believe I was in 10th grade, 11th grade, 10th grade. And I won first place in the school art competition with that. So my father and stepmother had it hanging in their house until my dad passed away. And then my stepmother thought I'd like to have it. So I received it back and not that you want to see the commode, but this is another one of those freeform art pieces I made. And this is supposed to be, it's all done with shells and whatnot. It's supposed to be um, a fishing boat with a fishing pole hanging off the sides, going down into under the water where you see little fish swimming amongst the coral and whatnot. And this is a mermaid I made in ceramics many, many years ago and was going to make a water fountain fall thing out of it and was just gonna create a base to put underneath it. It didn't have a hole in it. I put the hole in it myself to make a water fountain or waterfall, whatever you wanna call it. Um, but then I never, never finished it. So anyway, 
coming along here. Do, 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 do. And you see one bathroom, you see them all. So now we're coming this way. Oh, and this is the boudoir where I rest my weary head at the end of a long day, but we're not gonna go in that door. We're going to go in the door that says my happy place. Here we go. Are you ready for the revealing? Are you ready? Here goes. One, two, three. It's a do-all room, so we're going to take you around the room. Here we go. Let there be light, and it was good. And we'll start off over here at the sewing section where I do my sewing. It's my new machine I got at Christmas time because my other machine finally went after 29 years. And my serger. And the embroidery machine is next on my list. And I did my share of designing some um, Barbie clothes for my best friend. She, both crochet and sewing with fabric, she collects vintage um, Barbies from the 50s and 60s. And this here I found on eBay. It's an actual, authentic Barbie dress form that Mattel had made. So I can use that as a, as a guide. And we got some fabrics down here. And I got some finished product up hanging up above the door. I won't show you that just yet. And then we come over here. Oh, and we got more threads and more goodies. Serger threads and such. And since I'm right here, these are two ponchos I finished crocheting. So I've been crocheting since my last video. Just they, they're going to be for gifts. And so I didn't do a tutorial on them. And my wonderful friend Jay of Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam had a tutorial out, which I will try eventually, where you take and do a poncho and then you pick up stitches with your knitting needles and knit a rib stitch, knitted rib stitch for the collar. And I didn't have time to do that because I'm a very slow knitter. So I did it in crochet with front and back post double crochet. And then this one... Behind it is a poncho. See if I can move this out of the way you can see. Ah, there you get a better look. And it's a mand mandala, mandela pattern. Oh, now that I just messed up the aesthetics of it all. So there you have that. And now we'll come around the room here. And this is the computer slash right now my music recording um, area, printer and all that. And you come over here and of course got my microphone and stuff set up for a tabletop. I got my, my regular stand downstairs and the computer and all my computer stuff and chair and all that, all that good stuff. And now we're going to come to the piece de resistance. Well, no, let's save that for last. Let's go over here. Let's circle around and let's go over to the craft table where, whoops, Camera's moving, camera's moving, where will it land, where will it land? There it goes. Anyway, so this is where I eventually would get back into doing my jewelry making and whatnot. And I've just been organizing craft stuff. And this is the most recent thing I found on Amazon. I saw somebody in a tutorial. It's a ruler, but it's heat resistant. So if you need to fold something over and have a half inch fold or something, you can actually iron right on top of this and, and have an exact measurement. So I haven't tried it yet but that's new also new is this set that i got on amazon for 12 dollars and something of came with the pliers and everything and these snap um different colored um plastic snaps for you can put them on a little bag or clutch or baby garments or what have you and so if i turn it over it won't spill out it comes with all kinds of colors yeah and then this is all my jewelry making stuff and down in here and under there's more more jewelry making stuff. I made jewelry for a lot of years and so I'm going to get back into doing that. And then we'll come over here and as I said I get scrap fabric from work. It's not organized yet and I need to find a way to put this so it's not on the floor. But this is a lot of the fabric I've gotten from work. Just some scraps and you know that go in the junk box and then they go in the trash can. So 
I'm finding some uses, like I made my dining room curtains and such, and, you know, I'll make some things for birthday gifts and Christmas gifts and things like that. And now we're coming to the yarn stash. Behold, people. Behold. dum da da dum Here we go. Look at this beautifully organized yarn stash. When I tell you I have a stash, I have a stash. Now we can start over here. And, oh, there's a little doll that I did. Created the pattern myself. I well, didn't write it down. I just kind of did it about three years ago. And I'll show you this one here since we're doing the dolls. This is my little Swiss Alps girl. Kind of, kind of made me think of Maria von Trapp was on my mind when I had done that one. And then this one was modeled. I even made her some Uggs. This was modeled after... A close friend of mine back in California who we called Auntie Mare and everybody called her Auntie and so she's got her little Gucci purse and this is Auntie Mare goes shopping anyway so now let's start over here I guess we got all of our shades of gray and black and anything that's mostly got gray in it yarn different I, I organize by color not by style so or weight of yarn or type of yarn so it's a mixture that way, but when I get ready to do projects, I just find what I want, and there it is. And then we got the blues down here. We got some Just Yarn Tweed that was from the dollar store, which, by the way, that is good yarn. Um, over here, we got some Red Heart. I can see some Red Heart in there. Um, I know what this is. This is a Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn because that is my favorite yarn to work with. And down here, we have some reds. We have some cotton. And uh, some more of, um, oh, what is this? What is this? Oh, this is Hobby Lobby. I love the yarn. I told you, I love the yarn. And we got some purples down here and some things. And down here we got some some pinks. And this is, oh, is this one of the ones I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to insert at the end of this video? I'm going to insert my very short trip to Hobby Lobby for their yarn haul. By the way, um, I didn't know about it and I stumbled on a, on a video on YouTube one night and then I stumbled on a bunch of them people talking about the Hobby Lobby yarn haul that's normally done in June and they were doing it in March and so I hurried over <laughs> to the two Hobby Lobbies by me both of which had already been doing the sale like since that Monday and this was now on Friday a couple weeks ago and there was hardly anything left and the lady had told me at the one Hobby Lobby that the first two days people were leaving with cartfuls just cartfuls so, but I got some good deals. I got, uh, let's see, Yarn B, Pima Suprema, color is Salmon, and it's three, let's see if we're going to focus, three and a half ounces, 180 yards it looks like. I don't know why I'm not focusing. It was normally, where are we at? Normally $5.99, okay? I got it for $1.49, $1.49, and it is considered a, let me turn this one-handed, it's considered, God, where's the, I'm doing this by hand with the camera too, so it's considered a number four medium. They are recommending a number eight knitting needles or a number I9 crochet hook, but you could use whatever you like. So I did get this in, in, in a few other colors. I've got two of those. Here is my green. Oh, wait, let me not skip my teals. Got my teals going here. Teals and shades of teal and some teal with sparkle in there. And now I ran out of room in the blues. So some of my red heart ombre that was from a project and I had a bunch left over a while back. That's down here along with crochet thread because I'm going to start getting back into crocheting with thread. So I may end up doing a tutorial on a doily or two from, if you remember the uh, video that I did about, oh, a year and a half, two years ago, uh, the book review that I did on the vintage crochet books, there was a couple of them, and one of them had doilies in it. So I may, I may uh, do a tutorial. We have our greens here, and shades of green, and what is this? This is some more, more Hobby Lobby. This is, this is wonderful. I've worked with this before. This is Yarn B, Breathe Deep in the color Sage. So if you, it, it's, it's extremely soft. It's just, it's, um, and this, for some reason, it's not focusing on this. Maybe it's too close. Um, 
It's three and a half ounces, 216 yards. Um, and let me turn this, oops, one-handedly. It is a, I don't know why this won't focus. Let me, let's see. Uh, it's not focusing, but it's a, um, they're calling for a 4.5 millimeter knitting needles or a four millimeter crochet hook, which is a size G uh, or a size seven on the knitting needles. It is 100% polyester, 216 yards, 100 grams, three and a half ounces, and it's extremely soft. And this here is, uh, oh, this is also now I got this on the yarn haul from Hobby Lobby. Nature's, it's yarn B, Nature's Nook. The color is moss. And let me turn it with this hand. It was regularly $5.49, and I got it for $1.37. So I picked up the last four of those that were on the shelf. Um, this green here, I won't pull it out, but it's the same as another color I can show you. It's called Cottonette, I believe, and that was also something I got on the yarn haul. So as we move along, and I'll show you when I get to that other color, here's all my knitting stitch books, of which, most of which I went out and bought about three years ago after watching Jay on Jay's Knit and Pearl Jab, watching one of her book reviews where she reviewed a few books. So I went through and looked at all her book reviews, and I got on Amazon and I bought them all. And so now I have the collection, maybe missing some here or there, and some I've picked up over the time um, that weren't recommended by by her but um i don't know if this is one or not let's see no that that is what is this one we'll 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 have to come back to that and do a book review same thing with crochet i got all my crochet books and then i've got the loose pattern books that i reviewed some of those and then my book of the needling hooker crochet patterns can you see and that's um patterns that i've designed over the years and we'll come up here and here's some knitting swatches that I've done. That's a um, a beautiful tutorial that, that Jay did uh, a shawl on. And I'm going to make another one. I made one for my mom. It's a beautiful pattern. Um, here's my needling hooker knitting patterns that I've designed. Um, or altered or made my own by tweaking a stitch here and there. Um, one skein wonders. And let's move in over this way. We'll come back down over here. This is great yarn, and I've got to find a use for it. This was on clearance a while back at Hobby Lobby. And these were $4.99, and I got them for $1.24. I got five of one color, three of another, and two of, of this one. And this is the Yarn B Antoinette. And this is the colorway... Uh, what is the colorway? Carolina Wilderness. And... It's saying use an eight millimeter or size 11 knitting needles. Um, let me turn, geez, I'm having a hard time doing this one-handed. Um, it's not focusing, I don't know why. Uh, or a seven millimeter size K crochet hook. It's 100% acrylic, 100 yards, three and a half ounces, or excuse me, 62 yards, 100 grams, three and a half ounces. And so, and it's kind of, can you see it? It's kind of spirally like and it's very soft also and then we come over here now here's one of the ones i just got at the yarn haul that i told you about this is the oh this isn't just another color of the pima suprema okay and then a while back while i was still in san diego i was at a thrift store and they had all this and i got some in, in the beige color as well they had all this mohair the brand is called vim and it's 50 percent mohair 50 percent orlan two ply they're one ounce balls and I got them in, in this mocha color and a, 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 like a eggshell color. And they had them in a box. There was like 10 of each. And the box was only $2. So I've never found a project to do with those, but I will. Now we come up here and we've got our whites and some multicolors. These I bought at Joann's probably about eight years ago in a bundled bag. They were like four in a bag. So I got two bags for $3.99 a bag. And I've yet to find a project for them. Um... Then we start on some golds and yellows, and here is that cotton at that I have the green of, and this was regularly five forty nine, and I got it for one thirty seven, and I got four of this color and two of the green, because that's all they had left, and this is cotton, cottonette lind, and the color is apple cider, and it is three and a half ounces, hundred and eighty yards. Um, 
let's see. It's 20% linen, 80% cotton, three and a half ounces, 100 grams, 180 yards, five millimeter or size eight knitting needles, or five and a half millimeter size nine crochet hook. Um, so yeah, so I did get some good deals. This is some of the um, ice cream yarn from a long time ago. I've, had, I've used it for one project and had some left. And then we got more of the yellows and golds and oranges. And this came from years ago, and I still have a couple left. I bought this from uh, Tuesday morning, if you have a Tuesday morning near you. It's the Big Twist Premium, and it's super soft. It's a number four medium. The colorway is called Premium Yam. And, yeah, and then got these to go with it, and I still have some of those left. And then we come down here, and this this one right here, if I don't want to mess up my whole thing, I got during the Hobby Lobby yarn haul, regularly $4.99, and got it for $1.24. Whoops. And it is Yarn B. Let's turn it around. Oh, I'm dropping my stash. Hold on, people. Oh, let's put that back up there. Now, Yarn B Highlights. Yarn B Highlights in the colorway of rust and it's got a bit of sparkle if you can see the sparkle it's got some sparkle in it and then last but not least down here all of this eyelash yarn and some of it i got at the 99 cent store over the years and just never got to using it like like this beautiful tan color but at, during the hobby lobby yarn haul i got the red and the gold so this is yarn yarn b gilt eyelash Star Ruby is the colorway. Three ounces, 111 yards. It was $5.49, people. I got it for $1.37. So I got two of the red and I got two of the gold. And then we'll just move along over here. Nothing special except my big needling hooker bag, project bag, and my knitting needle case down there with long straight needles. All my, all my needle sets are in the bag. And I've got three containers with finished products, as you can probably see in there, a lot of shawls and whatnot. And then here is, I call her Greta. This is another crochet doll I did. This is my Swiss Alps girl. The other one is my Maria Von Trapp. Anyway, and then here's some finished items. I'll show you this now if I can lay it out. Jay had done a wonderful tutorial and design for a um, knitted collar called the Wakanda Forever. If you've not seen it, check that out on her channel on Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. And I started to make it and I'm a very slow knitter and I especially don't, um, I get tired of, of purling after a while. So I, I altered it at one point and just did a knit, just knit all the way around. And then the bottom section I cast off and went onto a crochet hook and did a crocheted border. But I'll lay it down and show it to you. So this is she called the Wakanda forever since I altered it and added crochet. I call it the Wakanda sometimes. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, um, yeah, this, the, the border's all crocheted and from about there down. And I stopped purling right about there and just knit because I was tired of purling. Anyway, so that's that finished object. And that's about it. I will I will back up so you can have an overview again of the wonderfulness that this room is. Once I get all that fabric picked up, it'll be even better. But there we are. Happy times, happy times. And I'll be back. In just Well, a bit. how did you enjoy that tour of my home? Finally, it took a while to get this done because, well, life happens between work and everything else. And I kept saying this weekend, this weekend, and I just kept putting it off and other things would come up. So I finally said, you know what? I'm doing this. So I had the day off from work. So I went ahead and just got her done. Anyway, um, but before I leave you, and I'm going to start trying to do regular videos now. I'm going to slowly get into that and resume doing actual tutorials and some more book reviews. And the one thing that I think I had mentioned um, a while back in one of the videos, plus it's on the main opening that of my channel, um, where it shows, you know, what's going to be on the channel, the book reviews and, and tutorials and so forth. It mentions um, interviews with guests, knitters and crocheters and fiber artists. Well, that is now finally in the works. I've got two 
of the people that I follow, and you may also, so I won't say who they are yet, but let it be a surprise. But I've got one for sure that I'm in the process of writing up some questions and sending to them, and then they're going to film themselves doing the answers and send that to me, and then I'm going to edit it with myself, so it'll be like an interview. And you could get to know more about them and their channels and what they do and 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 their craft. And, and if you're a knitter, there's going to be some knitters. There's going to be some crocheters. I just like to call everybody a fiber artist because it's all fiber related. So that's going to be coming up um, shortly. I won't say when, but it won't be as long as this one's been in the making. And I better move the camera back there now. I'm, I'm holding this in one hand as I've been doing all day. Um, so anyway... Uh, but before we go, I do want to share with you um, a couple things that I'm working on. One is a complete design I've designed myself, and it is a, it's not a poncho. I'm not even going to call it a mini poncho. It's sort of a, like a capelet that all one piece goes over your neck, and it would come oh, about midway down um, like a cape would, except for it's not open in the front with buttons or ties or ribbons, or it's just all one piece. So I'm designing that and working on that just to use up some yarn that was in my stash that I've had forever and got tired of looking at. And so I'm going to show you that. And I, what I've done is I've combined, I wanted to use a sport weight yarn and I didn't have one in the color that I wanted. So the one color that I had that I liked, I had a variegated yarn with a similar color in it and the colors in that blended with the solid and they were thin enough, probably like a number three light. So I put them together and actually not even a three light. They were more like like between a one and a two. I put them together and it's the weight I wanted. And I've got the look I want. It's very artistic. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that here. And then I'm going to uh, insert some still pictures of it on my mannequin. So you can see how it's coming along and progressing. And then the other thing is I found um, a pattern for making a crocheted basket, like a little hand basket, utilizing a CD, like you'd make a music CD or that type of thing for your computer. So I'm making a little basket and doing up an Easter basket for my mother for this Sunday, which is Easter Sunday. And so I'm going to share that with you guys. So stay tuned. Okay, well, here is the work in progress. So first of all, let me show you the, the yarn. This is a coral color. It's got like some lighter spots in it, maybe a little bit of not white, but let's see if I can get a little bit closer. And then I have a multicolor. And the multicolor, I remember I had bought that, oh God, three, four years ago at a Tuesday morning uh, for a good price. And the coral color, I don't remember where I got that. I had gotten two hanks of it, I believe it was, at a yard sale or something. And it's really soft. It's, it's almost like something you'd want to have in a, a very fine shawl if it was by itself, very lacy. Um, but I had gotten a good deal on that. So then I wound both hanks up into a big cake. Anyway, um, so that is the yarn. This, and I'm doing this with a with with a with a J six millimeter hook, and the top part, the the part that goes around your neck, I started that off with an H, no, an I started it with an I. But let me, I can't do this one handed. I'm gonna let me set the tripod down just a second. Okay, now I can maneuver both hands here. Let's see, um, so. I'm going to put still pictures so you can see what's going on, but let me, let me hold it up like this. So here is the part that will go over your head around the front and around the back. It's all one piece worked in rounds and it's a very lacy pattern, but see how the colors just kind of change and melt together. And let me open this up. See if you can see better the stitch. So it's basically some chains and single crochets and some double crochet, two cluster, not three cluster. Um, and I will insert some pictures so that you can see what that better looks like. Let me turn it around. Maybe you can see a different color combination on the other side. How it just, how it just, it's very artistic looking if you see it in person. The color is just really blended nice, I thought, with the, um, with the solid coral in it. Anyway, let me get some still pictures on there and check it out.
Okay, so the other thing that I'm working on the basket, this is like the blend of yellows and such that you saw when we were touring the, my um, craft room and showing my yarn stash. This was also, um, I've had this for a few years, but it was also one of the ice cream um, yarns. And it's different shades of brown and tan and that sort of thing. And so it's kind of really neat. And so this pattern is basically you start with a blank CD and you crochet around the CD, okay? And then, and if anybody of you want to learn this, I'd be happy to do a tutorial on it, although I got it off of a tutorial. Um, and then it's basically, well, it's, it's coming along. Let me see if I can hold it up here so you can see. And it's, it's just done in rounds. And so then it has a solid, sturdy base. And when you get it done, you crochet a handle. So this is going to be the little Easter basket for my mother. And I'm going to put jelly beans and chocolate eggs and some peeps and all kinds of fun stuff in there. So I've got to finish that this evening. And that's what I've got for works in progress. Well, I'm glad we got to spend this time together. And again, leave some comments, what you thought. Love to hear from you. And I'll try to answer as many of those as I can. Um, and look forward to getting back in the swing of things and doing some regular videos and such like I just told you about. And just glad that you guys came along for the tour. And welcome to my home. You're always welcome. This evening when you're sitting, when you watch TV, if you haven't already, you need to order some Sanka coffee. Make yourself a cup of Sanka coffee. Watch a movie. Relax. Crochet. Knit. Whatever you want to do. And you're going to see. You absolutely will have a wonderful night's sleep. No problem. Take it from me. I wouldn't steer you wrong. Until next time, from my home to yours, here's the needling hooker saying a happy Easter to you, wonderful ho holiday weekend, and may all of you stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you next time. Bye.